Hello. Hello, this is Holger from Germany. Am I talking to Mr. Bob Michelucci? You are, yes. How are you? Yeah, fine. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your time today. Yes. I want to, uh, if it's okay for you, I want to uh, tell you some questions, ask you some questions and uh, translate them into Germany and uh, deliver them to your fans. Is it okay? That would be fine. Okay. So let's start with the first question. I'm going to make an intro of you, uh, of you and I'm going to send uh, the link to you when it's ready so you can see it, okay? Sure, thank you. Okay. Um, let's start with a very emotional uh, but important question. Uh, your very first visit in the movie theater as a little child, can you remember that? Well, I remember uh, as a young boy, uh, a group of us would go to the theater every weekend. Uh, <clears throat> when I was young, uh, it was common. <clears throat> it was common for all of us to go to a theater every weekend, and we would see uh, all types of movies, from Tarzan movies to Elvis Presley movies to a lot of the different horror movies. Uh, Three Stooges, everything like that, and uh, so I. But I think uh, you know some of my early impressions. I know my 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 favorite film, and probably one of the first ones I remember seeing uh, as a kid uh, in a movie theater was Horror of Dracula, and uh, that that sort of really hooked. Me. And uh, you know the the. The, the Christopher Lee Dracula was in in, the, in color, uh, you know, it was just uh, incredible. And I, I guess from that on, uh, I was really hooked with, uh, especially the horror movies. Was that the moment when you got triggered with horror? I I would I would think so. That was probably the prime uh, time that I all of a sudden you know, got interested in, in the horror. And then almost at the same time, uh, when I was going to, to uh, grammar school, one day I passed a, a pharmacy across the street from my school, and he had a number of uh, the famous monsters of Filmland magazines hanging in the window. And, uh, and I went into this store. They were 35 cents back then. And uh, so the next day I asked my, my mom if, I could have some money to buy the magazine. And I know the first issue I bought was issue number 17 with the uh, House of Lanchester on the cover is The Bride of Frankenstein. So I never forgot that either. And I guess the combination of everything just got my interest uh, in it. And I just started collecting famous monsters from then on too. Yeah. What what really gave me the creeps, I remember it when I was a little kid and I saw the the movie poster and the lobby cards from Dawn of the Dead. Oh, I was so shocked by this, by these uh, faces, um, and I, I had nightmares. But I didn't see the movie. But I did see the movie then ten years later or so. But it was very, very shocking. <laughs> yes, I mean I don't think that would have been a movie for a little kid to see back then. You know, it was when I know when it came out. Uh, they were actually, I know they were going to give it an X rating here in the States because of all of the, all of the blood and guts. And it was probably the, the first film of its kind that, that displayed so much graphic, uh, uh, violence. Uh, and so it was, it was groundbreaking. When, when you were on the set, what did you think? Did you think, wow, what is this? Is something special going on? Or what are these guys doing here with all the blood? What did you think? Can you, you know, remember? I, you know, I had an advantage because in, in 1977, uh, I got to do something I always wanted to do. Since I collected the Monster magazines, there was no price guide uh, available to see what the value of them was, uh, like the comic book price guide. And so I, I decided to put one together, and uh, I couldn't get anyone to publish it, so I self-published it. And, and But what I did was I was able to build a friendship with Forrest Ackerman, who, who was the editor of it, of the magazine. And, uh, and so I finally got to self-publish the book, and Forrest Ackerman had done the intro for me. Uh, and 
uh, one day I went out to lunch. I was working for an advertising agency at the time. And when I came back, Tom Savini, who did the special effects for Dawn of the Dead, uh, was sitting waiting to, to meet me with a box full of his famous monsters. He wanted to show me his collection. So this was almost a year before they started filming Dawn of the Dead. And we built up a, a friendship. Uh, George Romero's offices at that time were only about six doors up up the street from where my office was. And uh, so I got to meet George. And, and so by the time they started filming Dawn of the Dead, my offices had moved uh, into the same building as Romero's. I was on the first floor, and I was publishing a magazine called Questar, science fiction, fantasy, and horror magazine. And, uh, and George... His offices were on the fifth floor, and I already had built uh, a good friendship with uh, Tom Savini, too. So they actually asked us to, uh, you know, they said they were filming this movie, and they needed a bunch of people to be zombies. Would we be interested? And, and of course, you know, we just, a bunch of us gathered together and went out. So it was, it was an interesting, uh, you know, to see the behind the scenes at the mall, because we would go into this huge room, and everybody was in there being made up uh, with the gray makeup and the blood. And, uh, you know, so it was very interesting to watch how, how it progressed through, through behind the scenes. Again, I was, I was very lucky since I knew them. I got to be one of the special zombies uh, with the squib and get my, my forehead uh, uh, blasted away. So that was even more of a treat. Yeah. But the, the, the atmosphere is very, very creepy. But how how was the the atmosphere on the set? Was it uh, did, well, did you I feel the, this the creep? Opposite. I mean, the atmosphere on the set was actually very light. Uh, I think everybody behind the scenes was 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 having just a good time waiting around for their turn to be a zombie. George, uh, his, he, you know, he was a master at directing, and Mike Gornick, his, his cinematographer, was a great guy. But they were very laid back. And so, you know, most of us had, were wearing our own clothes that they just told us to wear something, uh, you know, that we thought would be appropriate. That's why there's a nurse zombie and, and a Harry Krishna zombie, because everybody came in what they thought would, would be interesting. Uh, but so behind the scenes, they're, they're, you know, it was, it's, it, was, it was very almost light. And, you know, when you got to watch some of the uh, filming, uh, really takes away the, the, the drama from, from the finished product because when you see what's going on, there's so many different things where they're setting up lighting and, and, and camera angles and, and rehearsing that, that it's not very frightening at all on the set. Uh, but it's amazing to see the finished product when you actually sit in the theater and, and see what what came out of it. Yeah. Um, when, when you're an actor in this kind of movie... Uh, do you feel that this is something special you're into? This uh, this movie c could become a cult classic. Do you feel this special? Um, no, honestly, at the time, no. I mean, we we just felt you know thrilled to be able to be in a movie to begin with, and I don't think any of us. Uh, you know, I can't speak for George or Tom, but I I can't believe that. Any of us would have thought that 40 some years later, anybody would even remember the movie or be talking about it, let it alone have such a cult following. Uh, you remember that was made only nine or ten years after Night of the Living Dead was made, and even then, there wasn't much of a following for Night of the Living Dead back then. You know, it was sort of a, a movie that was made, and now they've gone on to, to do uh, this sequel that. They really didn't have that much of a following for night uh, at that time either. I probably, when I published uh, the Quest Star magazine in the late 70s and uh, early 80s, was one of the first persons to, to do a feature article on Night of the Living Dead and Where Are They Now, where I tried to uh, seek out several of the original cast members, uh, you know, to get their impressions on what it was like almost what you're doing with me now. And so that was interesting, you know, to get, get uh, their, their take on, on the uh, being in the original Night of Living Dead. 
And then later on, in 1993, I, I was the chairman that put on the Zombie Jamboree in Pittsburgh, where it was the first time the, the uh, cast reunited in the public eye to sign an autograph. Oh, excuse me. So that was uh, so that was very interesting too, and uh, we got to meet all of those people. We re premiered the movie with the red carpet, and had and had a great time. And we brought it was one of the larger conventions in the states at that time. So we brought everybody uh, uh, in from all over the world to uh, you know uh, fans that that got to meet uh, George and, and uh, the other celebrities, including Keith Wayne, who passed away not too much after uh, that show. Yeah. <clears throat> As you said before, you published uh, uh, wonderful books, uh, for example, about the old school handmade special effects. Uh, do we need yeah, more? I was lucky enough through um, uh, Tom again, uh, you know, originally uh, you know, that, that I published uh, and designed his Grand Illusions and Grand Illusions book two, his two makeup books. And through Tom, I, I was able to, to build a friendship with Dick Smith, who was very well known for doing uh, The Godfather and, and uh, uh, so many other movies. And he had already published a magazine through Famous Monsters on, on uh, uh, Monster Makeup Handbook. So I was able to republish that as a trade paperback. And Dick uh, was kind enough to update it. So, uh, and then I, I was able to go on and do a book on Forrest Ackerman, The Famous Monsters. I did the Complete Night of Living Dead film book and, and several others. So uh, I was able to build an in independent uh, publishing company, uh, mainly doing different horror-related books. Yeah. And, uh, they all sold pretty well. Yeah. Um, and I, I think Savini's Grand Illusions is still considered one of the Bibles of... Uh, you know, special effects makeup. Yeah. In your opinion, do we need more of those old school special effects today in the movies? I think so. I mean, I, you know, the CGI is, is good, <clears throat> but, you know, I, I, I'm not a big fan of it, honestly. I, I like the, uh, the technique of the old school effects just just in, it, it was such an art and a craft in its own way you know whether you go back to Willis O'Brien uh, with King Kong or Ray Harryhausen with all of the great movies he made and then you go to the, the special makeup effects with Dick Smith and Sabini and Greg Nicotero um, you know uh, I think it was just such an art that uh, you know it's 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 just like the actors, you know, I mean, you're, you're going to have great actors and you're going to have not so great actors. So I think when you, you really appreciate when someone is, is, is so good at its craft, I think also I would hope that, that independent uh, young people uh, still continue to try and uh, do their own thing like I was able to do with the book publishing or magazines uh, you know, because I think the world still needs an independent young person, uh, male or female, uh, you know, to just to, to be able to, to bring their focus to, to things. And so many uh, people have gone on to, to uh, you know, great careers just from starting uh, their own little projects, you know. And, and today there's so much more that people can do because of the internet and, and computers. When I was doing it, computers didn't exist uh, uh, for the most part. So everything was, was uh, cut and paste and, you know, drawing the layouts and, and, and everything else. So it was very, way more tedious and, and it took a lot more time. And, you, you know, to reach people, you had to put ads in little publications and, uh, and did mail order because there was no internet. Uh, so I think today people have a lot more tools that they're uh, that they can work with. Um, I've also been, uh, you know, very excited just that I'm been a guest at several 
convention. Uh, you know, I had put a couple shows on in Pittsburgh years ago. I, in fact, I, I was the first person in the States to bring Caroline Monroe uh, as a guest to a convention back in 1979. But now the tables have turned where I've been able to be a guest at a lot of shows to sign autographs, and mostly from uh, uh, the, the bit part that I had in Dawn of the Dead. I also published the Dawn of the Dead poster book and designed that, so you know, that helped, but I mean, as much of the publishing that I had done in the past and continue to do, and I'm still pretty well known for just a few second uh, shot in the movie as the scope zombie. Yeah. <clears throat> but you can, uh, what is very cool, I think, you can uh, ask every movie geek in the world what happened in Pittsburgh and everyone everyone knows what happened in Pittsburgh that's yeah, that. funny how that's that's what we're known for yeah. but uh, but it, it again it was fun I know the one night when I had my head shot done there was a group of us and uh, everybody was in makeup and, and, and we were there all night so it, uh, it's probably six seven or eight in the morning Across the street from the mall, there there used to be a, a a place for breakfast with pancakes. So we all walked in to that restaurant to get breakfast. Those people had no clue that anything was being filmed in the mall. <laughs> so it looked like all of these goofy-looking people dressed up for Halloween were walking into their restaurant in December. So... After we finally explained why, you know, they let us sit down and, and eat. And it was it was funny just to, to watch their reaction. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can imagine. Bob, what is your favorite monster? My favorite monster? Aside from me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still think Dracula. You know, I think... Um, If I had to pick one, I still pick Dracula, and I still pick probably Christopher Lee is my favorite Dracula. Uh, so uh, that's you know I know on Halloween I, I'd always want to dress up as a vampire and, and uh, had the capes. And uh, actually, Tom Savini again years ago was nice enough to make a pair of fangs for me, uh, casting my my mouth and. Maybe my own pair of fangs, so, which I still have somewhere. So it's uh, it's just uh, it's, you know, it's been a thrill. But I would I would say Dracula is all right. Okay, if you got the chance to realize a movie project uh, from your dream, the the what what you want to, what would be the story like? Would it would it be a horror movie? And who who would you cast in it? Uh, it probably would would be a horror movie. I almost, I had an idea years ago for, for a spoof uh, that was a, a comedy horror movie, and it was called Dawn of the Dead. But I'm Italian, so my Dawn of the Dead was spelled D-O-N. And, and the premise there was that uh, it was sort of a mafia-run zombie cult that uh, had, a, had a head zombie who was the dawn of, of, of the dead. Yeah. And, and it went, went from there. And I always thought that might be the cute idea to, to, uh, to do. Yeah. But I had a, uh, you know, just a, a, a marvelous uh, career as far as I'm concerned. I've got to meet so many people over the years. I mean, one of my favorite uh, actors uh, was always Vincent Price. And uh, back uh, in the uh, mid-70s, I had done a, an illustration of, of Mr. Price in, with all of his uh, different characters. And he happened to be in Pittsburgh for a play called Charlie's Aunt with Ryan McDowell and, and his wife. And I got to meet him after the play uh, backstage. And he was so cordial. And uh, he signed the illustration that I did and uh, we took some photos and, uh, and later later on he also uh, did an introduction for the uh, 
book that I published on Corey Ackerman for me, and he did that at no charge. And then I also got to meet Christopher Lee, and, uh, and Mr. Lee uh, did a, an introduction for uh, one of my other books. Uh, I think, you know, back then, again, before the Internet, uh, these guys, they were willing, you know, they could tell when somebody was legitimately <clears throat> trying to start out in a field, and they just seemed to be willing to help people out. It was actually easier to get in touch with, with some of these celebrities then than it is today. Yeah. It's, it's become a little too commercial now. Yeah. Um, please be so kind and finish the sentence. Running zombies are? Stupid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're not creepy? Are, are they not creepy? My feeling is that, you know, if, if, if this is an undead being, the last thing they're going to have is super speed. And uh, I, I just doesn't. I just don't think that it it fits the mold of what what a zombie is supposed to be. Yeah. <clears throat> so you said you're Italian. Do you like Italian zombies from, for example, Lucio Fulci? Uh, yes, and uh, and also Argento. Uh, you know, also worked with Romero on. Uh, on his version of Dawn of the Dead. So uh, uh, I, I do like them. You know, I, I like all forms of, of the different horror films. But, uh, uh, and it's funny because with I know The Walking Dead, and I know Greg Nicotero is a, a very good friend of mine too because we got to meet years ago when he was just starting and working with Tom Savini. And we, we kept in touch as friends over the years. Uh, I've never been a big fan of Walking Dead, even though it's so popular, because I think that's so so gory. And now that's that we were able to show that on television. Uh, where years ago it was it was uh, even taboo to almost have it in a movie theater. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> I got two more questions. Is it okay? Sure. Okay. Yes. Nobody knows, but maybe you do. Whatever happened to Rob Bottin? Rob Bottin? Yes. How's he doing? I do, <laughs> do you know? I, 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 no, I, I honestly don't know what happened to him. Maybe, maybe Tom Savini would know, I, uh, or Greg, but uh, um, or he might have just just uh, retired from from. Doing it. Okay. Uh, interesting, but no, I, I'm sorry, I don't know. Okay, I just want to know if he's uh, fine, uh, if if everything's okay, because nobody knows, nobody. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, there was another fellow that uh, he also was like one of the editors of uh, Town magazine when I was doing Screen Points Illustrated magazine, by the name of Bill George, and his name was everywhere. Uh, back uh, then, and uh, he disappeared off the face of the earth. Yeah. I've never been able to track him down anymore either. Okay. So, we never get to know that. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. T t tell us, please, um, at last, what are your current p projects and your future plans? Well, a lot of times I don't have... My future, I just... I used to run a marketplace here in Pittsburgh for 15 years. And I just sort of semi-retired from that. And so it, it's open, and, and most of the time that was on weekends. So it's finally opened up uh, uh, my weekends, and I'd like to do more guest appearances at different shows and venues. Yeah, I was I was lucky enough to be in Germany back in November uh, as a guest to sign autographs at a, at a wonderful show. And I would hope to... Uh, be able to do more of those types of shows and, and meet the fans because it's very interesting uh, and it's fun you know, for, for us to be able to do that and uh, do some more local shows. I have uh, my hobbies photography, so I love to go out and take photos and uh, uh, make prints of my work and 
in April, my wife and I and my son were going to Italy for a, a couple of weeks uh, for a vacation. So different things on the horizon. You know, I'm sure I'll end up coming up with another book project. Uh, uh, my last uh, two books, one was called Memories of the Living Dead, and I got a number of the people that were in a lot of the as zombies and, and, and the zombie films to uh, to write about their experiences about being in those films and zombies. And then I did another book about um, all of the filmmaking that's been uh, done in Pittsburgh. Uh, uh, all of the movies that were made here, all of the celebrities that uh, have come from the area. So I've done those two, and I was uh, also working to try and get an entertainment museum uh, put together here in Pittsburgh. So, so uh, and I did I have talked to uh, uh, George Romero's wife. Uh, she's also looking to see if she can get a horror museum started here. So there's, there's some of the things. But I'd like to do more shows. Okay. We're looking forward to this, and we uh, hope to see you s soon uh, again in Germany. And uh, I hope so, too. It was a beautiful country. I didn't get to see a lot of it because it was such a quick trip. Uh, I, uh, I was lucky enough to have dinner with... Uh, a friend of my daughter's who happens to be uh, working uh, in Germany right now, so we, we were able to get together with her family. But uh, I'd like to see a lot more uh, of the country on the next trip back. Okay, looking forward to this. Thank you uh, very much for your time. All the best for your future. Thank you, and uh, I, I appreciate you getting in touch with me. Thank you. I hope, uh, I was able to give you some insight. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. All the best thank for you. you. We stay in contact, okay? Yes, definitely. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.